I'm Brad Harris, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Historic Smithtown. Today, we are visiting the John Lawrence Smith Homestead in the heart of the village of the Branch on the Smithtown Historical Society's property. John Lawrence Smith was one of the most important historical figures in Smithtown's past, and we'd like to bring you his story today. John Lawrence Smith was born in 1816. He was a direct descendant of Richard Smith, the bull rider, the patentee of Smithtown. When he was a young man, I'm sure he attended local schools here in town. And then in 1833, he entered Yale College. He leaves Yale and enters Princeton. He graduated from Princeton in 1837. He was admitted to the bar in New York State in 1840. He had a practice of four years in the city as a lawyer when he removed to Suffolk County in 1845. And he hadn't been out here long before he acquired the home that we know as the homestead. He got that home from the Blydenbergs and he did so by foreclosing on their mortgage. And he moved from his home in Nessequag up to Main Street, Smithtown. Primarily, we were told, because his wife wanted to be closer to the shopping. She said that living in Nessequag was too far from a lemon. It's interesting that they called the home that they lived in the homestead. It was the judge who did that. He called it the homestead because he wanted to give it character as if the all the Smith kids and he had been born there. That was his homestead. In 1850, he became elected district attorney of Suffolk County. And in 1858, he was elected county judge. And one of the things that makes him so important, I, I guess, was the fact that he was this surrogate judge. That meant he adjudicated wills and uh, property settlements when people passed away. In fact, he was so important to the people of Suffolk County and so respected, really, that even when he, uh, in his later years, when he was in declining health, he continued to serve as a surrogate judge and to make it possible for him to meet his clients he was allowed to actually construct a office in his home here in Smithtown. That way he didn't have to travel anywhere to go to work. He could simply hold court sessions in his house. He died in 1889 and he died in the house, the homestead. In fact, um, people tell me his ghost is still with us in the homestead and occasionally makes an appearance. When the judge died in 1889, he left his house and property to his eldest son, who was James Clinch Smith. He was the only surviving son of John Lawrence Smith. All of the Smiths benefited from the fact that they inherited a fortune. And it didn't come from their father. It actually came from their mother, who was related to a fellow by the name of A.T. Stewart who in his day was known as the Merchant Prince of New York and had made a fortune in the city of New York in dry goods. When he died, he left his fortune to his wife, but his wife, when she died, left her fortune to her heirs, and among her heirs was the wife of John Lawrence Smith. And the result is, when she died and the judge died, all the Smith kids came into a vast fortune. It was pretty significant. It made the Smith girls and their brother, James Clinch Smith, uh, leading members in New York's 400, for instance, the elite of the elite. The interesting thing is James Clinch Smith becomes a catch on the marriage market and he winds up marrying a young lady from Chicago, Bertha Barnes, her name is, 
He brings her back to Smithtown to live in the homestead for a while, but she decides life in Smithtown is a little too slow for her, having come from Chicago. I don't know whether they had marital difficulties, but in the end, she goes off to Paris to become the leader of an all-women's orchestra. She winds up living in Paris, and he winds up staying in Smithtown. Eventually, there's a reconciliation, and uh, he goes to meet her and be with her and lives in Paris for a while as well. He doesn't like the Paris setting, and he comes back to the States, comes back to the homestead and reestablishes his home in the homestead. He becomes a leader in Smithtown, like his father before him. And then his wife gets sick. Her condition became worse as time went by and he decides to go back to Paris to be with her. And then he's gonna bring her back to America with him. They were to travel together back on a ship called the Titanic. And at the last minute, she decided to wait another month or two before returning. And he went back alone. And of course, you know the story of the Titanic in 1912, it sank. And so did James Clinch Smith. He was aboard it and he lost his life in the Titanic. The house, which he had owned as the only son of John Lawrence Smith, passed to the sisters. The youngest sister, Bessie, inherited the house, and she lived there for a while with her family. Ultimately, Peter White, which would be her grandson, came into possession of the house, and he had it up for sale in the 1950s, I believe. And that's when an organization called the Smithtown Branch Preservation Association purchased the house and three acres of land that it was sitting on. When you think about it, the history associated with the building and the fact that next door to it now, it has the tavern, a Revolutionary War building that saw a lot of Revolutionary War history with it, associated right there together, you can see why even today it is critical for us to save those vestiges of the past for all of us. One of the purposes of the Smithtown Historical Society and one of its uh, uh, functions really is to preserve the past and make the past come alive for the present. And we attempt to do that a number of ways with our buildings. And we use the John Lawrence Smith home to teach kids today about the lifestyles of people in the 1800s, late 1800s, when the judge was living there. And we try to talk about the manners and mores of the time so that kids get an idea what it was like to grow up in a house in Smithtown in the past and what might be expected of them as a young person in the house. At school, uh, the children are learning about general American history. They're learning about New York State history, but we want to make sure that they learn about their own Long Island history. And coming to the Smithtown Historical Society is a very important part of that. They get hands-on experience with different time periods in Smithtown's history. We have the Eponita Smith Tavern, which was a important stagecoach stop during the Revolutionary War, so they learn about that with hands-on activities. We also have the home of a prominent Smithtown judge, Judge John Lawrence Smith. They do hands-on activities there related to that time period. And then we also have the Arthur Farmhouse, and the students learn about what farm life was like for children in the colonial time period as well. So I, I feel that hands-on experience with Long Island history and Smithtown history in particular is extremely valuable when you want your students to learn about their own history and take ownership of it. The Homestead program has a number of hands-on activities. At the beginning, they learn about the background of what was happening in the country at the time. They learn about some of the inventions of the time, such as the cotton gin. They're learning also about the changeover from heating homes with wood to heating them with oil. They see the judge's chambers and learn about how he actually held court in his office there in a time when he wasn't able to uh, make it to Riverhead. 
they also learn about etiquette, what the Victorian etiquette was at the time and how the children had a specific role in the family, how they were asked only to be in a certain part of the house. They see the parlor and they learn about some of the toys and things that the children enjoyed at that time. So then as an offshoot of that, they do a number of different hands-on activities. We also have them make a small wooden toy, which is called a cup and ball, which would be a traditional toy of the time and answer any questions that the students might have related to what makes their life different from the life of children at that time period. The opportunity to come to a space such as what we have here in Smithtown at the Historical Society and be surrounded by the history as it sits here. There's a feeling that you get that you don't get if you're removed from it. We hope for the students to connect to this while they're here and integrating the component of hands-on activities makes it even stronger of a lesson that they learn or it makes it even more memorable that they weren't just taking in these ideas or these facts that they're learning, they're actually participating in their own learning and I think that's what makes this kind of learning or a place like the Historical Society so valuable is the fact your proximity to the history and your own ownership of it. I hope you enjoyed this journey into the past and a look at the history of John Lawrence Smith and his homestead. For Historic Smithtown, I'm Brad Harris. Thanks for watching.